Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stone Face Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're watching some Legend of the Galactic Heroes today. We got some comments here, so let's see what we've got to say. We got Justin or Jaws from Patreon for each person's star saying, Gotta love the greed of capturing the single most important choke point of the galaxy and, instead of using it to build up stronger defenses, stabilize the economy, or seek a peace treaty, you immediately start drafting invasion plans to move beyond your new choke point. Brilliant idea. Job Trunicht is a clever bastard. He voices his support of the military constantly and is one of the main proponents for the invasion plan during the meeting, yet then votes against it. No matter what happens in this invasion, he comes out on top. If they breeze through the Empire, then he gets to sing the same song he always does about being a pro-military patriot. If the invasion fails to meet its goals, then he can stand proudly as one of the three dissenting voices and gain greater influence. Everyone hates the guy, but he's good at the game. What's well, good at this game? This game. I mean, same difference, right? <laughs> what? I'm just saying my piece. I think he's good at this game, Groove. What are you talking about? But no, uh, so yeah, last time was definitely the angle of, like, all of the politicians in the room just going, it's like, we're overextending, we're beyond our limits, let's go even further, because they have to, because it is either A, a point of ideology, or B, a point of they want continued support. Well, I mean, I think it's a weird thing to say that he's good at this, when that's mm -hmm. patently a stupid thing that he's doing. And He's I don't mean getting support clamoring to him and making himself appear better than everyone. I don't mean in like a, it's a bad thing that he's doing and like it's a self destructive, like at the end of the day, he's uh -huh. gonna lose this. I mean, are you saying we don't keep minutes in the future? Like, the fact that he voted nat no doesn't mean that somebody could just look at the record and say, yeah, but he said all this shit about we should do it. So it just I means that one, you're a, like you're literally a, you're literally a waffle, is what we're seeing here in the record. Is that you said one thing and then did another? I, I figure this is like probably a private-ish meeting, but like I always figured minutes were like summaries of what was happening in the conversation, not like the word for word transcription of it. So it would just be like Trunick argues against war. Everybody takes a vote. Uh, here's what the vote is. He like. didn't. He didn't though. It would, the summary, then, would be, Trunic argues for war, voted against war. So, that's what the summary would be. Also, are you telling me in this future where literally the table is a fucking computer, that not, a transcript isn't being kept? Oh, they can't just, like, record it? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they don't intend to. It's a public meeting of elected speaking, individuals. This isn't All of them are speaking super candidly, right? And even some are, like, uh, being... What's the word? They're specifically looking down on the people who are voting for them in that conversation and talking about them as tools. Like, but it's a, theory. it's a, it's a recorded vote, though. It's different. This is. Mm -hmm. There's two different things happening here that make me think one way or the other. A closed session meeting doesn't typically have a vote associated with it. That's more about the discussion and debate about how we should vote later, versus. Mm -hmm. An open forum meeting, well, it's not an open forum because there's no one from the public here, just versus a, a public meeting, say, like um, the shit that C-SPAN records, right? Where people are able to talk and do everything, but then we also record the vote that's happening. I don't right, believe yeah. that they would be having this vote on a very in public matter, especially a vote that's being recorded by the computer that <laughs> in a closed room session, because a closed room session shouldn't have any recordings at all. So I don't think I there's mean, middle ground. In in true Federation fashion, then, I'm going to suggest we start the committee to investigate the possibility of maybe implementing recording software in our meetings. And once we figure out which 17 people to put on that council after an extenuating vote through the public across the entire galaxy, then we'll get around to it. See, deciding if we should. The thing is that we both watch The Good Place, and I know the joke that you're making here, but you didn't yeah. go... You didn't go far enough with the first it's part. It's hard to. It's definitely a chore. Well, the first, the first part is you make a, a long sequence of events to form the committee, which will then investigate who should be on the committee to then investigate. You have to go 17 steps deep. 
to the realize committee committees. To, yeah <laughs> the committee to investigate the committee that will then look into starting the committee that will have a say in you know you gotta go so, you know, balls deep into committees but my point being is that it's I think it's a very stupid thing that he's done mm -hmm. because if you say one thing and vote the other way if anybody finds out it's just like Every time that we've ever looked up, like the yeah. the con the congressional votes, and realized who's fucking waffling on their literal stances. Yup. Uh, it. I guess that's just uh modern politics, right there. Honestly. And this is the side that you're agreeing with. Well. Gotta love a democracy, Griff. <laughs> Gotta love a democracy, Griff. Yeah, Yang Gang. That's all it is. Well, I don't think we're ever going to see the faction of anarchists. It's the oxymoron that that would be. You can still be a group. You can have our group of friends. That's not oxymoronic. Well, because it's still gonna, never going to be an organization of anarchists. They're never going to come together and do a thing. Not, because... not in this show. I think, this show. I think the winning position you've taken by choosing the group that you're going to identify is is that we're never going to see one come together in one of these shows. That... <laughs> there you go. If I If no one ever feels like writing my stuff because they don't understand it, then I can never be portrayed poorly, right? <laughs> Well, it's because if they never come together it's a sort of organized structure, I'm instantly going to start mocking them for going against the cause. But as soon as they have an organized structure, they aren't anarchists like, anymore. No different, <laughs> no different than if Job starts to try and take over the Alliance, right? That uh -oh. he starts trying to turn the Alliance into a, uh, a fascist state under his control. Instantly mm -hmm. start mocking Job because Job seems to be a... De a I would say Democrat democracy lover. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. Job seems He's to be on the side. Well, he, Job seems to be on the side of democracy, and then forms a, uh, you know, forms a, a tyranny, right? So it'd be the same thing. He also loves democracy, you know. <laughs> uh, no, you're thinking of Natalie Portman. No, no, like Palpatine's line, like in one of the movies, is literally like, I love democracy, <laughs> as he is being voted into be emperor. Well, yeah, he got to be Supreme Chancellor because of democracy. He can't get yeah. there without all the steps in between. It's really hard just to walk into the Capitol and become president with a gun. Yeah. I gotta say, though, I am excited to see all the ways the Federation falls apart in the future. Uh, but for right now, we got another comment here from Olaf23 from an indomitable prodigy who says, A deep cut joke in reference to comments mid episode. How do you even get to be king anyway? Uh, just punch uh, hell of suckers in mouth and tell chicks straight up that you like them. Uh, that's the craziest dudes used to get sent to separate high schools for. Schools are exactly designed to keep dudes from becoming kings. I don't remember from the episode, so I'm just going to put it down as possibly something you said. I don't use the word dudes as often as you do. Um, I gotta believe that I've made fun of you. I think it also you. falls off of previous comments, too, just now. I have to believe that I've made fun of you a whole lot of times for using the word sucker a lot. Because you come out of, like, a <laughs> 70s exploitation film sometimes when you say that. Yeah, you gotta really accent it if you're gonna do that. It's like, oh yeah, hell of suckers. <laughs> or something. Well, it's either that or, you know, the sucker in the gangster form. Yeah, yeah. But you, those are words that you use a hundred times more than I ever do, so I gotta believe this is quotes from you mid-episode. Oh, gosh, but no, like, uh, we were literally just saying, it's like, no, you can't just walk up with a gun and declare that you're in control now. No, apparently you gotta punch hell of suckers in the mouth. And tell chicks straight up that you like them. And stay out of school. So there you go. You now have your guide to becoming king. <laughs> All right. I think on that note, a uh, quick recap from last time is each person's star. A high council vote determines that the Free Planets Alliance will invade the Galactic Empire. After Yang's resignation is rejected by Cheap Sittle, uh, he a visits a restaurant and runs into Federica Grace Greenhill. I hate me a cheap sit hole. Yeah. 
Uh, but I believe where is she on the list? Jessica, there she is. Oh, you didn't even she... introduce it. Uh, well, I just wanted to go ahead and like remember the comp. Uh, the name real quick because Jessica goes on her political campaign. She's on tour. She's getting followers and uh, stuff's moving on. She's going forward with her life and doesn't need Yang. I'm just like, okay, this is pretty cool. She She's doing stuff of her own motive outside of the main character. This is great. I mean, she always was. Oh, she's doing she's doing like a very big, broad story changing action is what I mean. Yeah, I mean, she always was. Though. She she didn't walk in onto the job uh, speech thing because mm -hmm. Yang told her to. She did that on yeah, her own yeah. too. It is. It's good to see other characters who aren't the main characters being highly active in the story. That's fun. Uh, but that's essentially where we left off. So let's go ahead and go to the board and see what all has changed here. Uh, who have we added to the board? So let's go from bottom to the top here. The everyone's favorite game of the Where's Waldo. Yeah, who <laughs> anime. who's new? Who's missing? <laughs> What's going on? Well, I never take anybody off of the board, so Yeah, of course, uh Job versus Jessica is on the board, obviously. That's been there for a minute. Uh Yang was speaking to, it was right here. Uh, Frederica Greenhill. So where is he on the board? What position is he even in? Oh, there we go. Dwight Greenhill right there. Well, Frederica's down here, so I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's, that's Dwight. So, wh yeah, where'd Frederica go? <laughs> I guess, uh, did you... Where did you... I'm sorry, I must be missing it. Where did you put them? <laughs> Literally just pointed to them a second ago. Also, I, I, missed it I, was also I mean, logical consistency here, Griff. Did you just date two people with the same last name? Uh, yeah. So logically, so if, they should be if connected you think that, here. yeah, uh, if you think that they're related, oh, there she is. Oh, then, right, she's she's been there the whole time. I well, completely. Forgot. My point being is, if you think that they're related, Griff. The standard board thing was that they'd have a blue line connecting them. So all you do is follow a blue line from one to the other. Since since when have I ever followed a straight line to any kind of logic? Yeah, argument? literally commented two recordings ago during Gundam. So I believe that is the big new addition to the board there. Dwight Greenhill, the father, Admiral, uh, who has apparently interacted well with Yang, and I think. I think that was the conversation that ultimately pushes him back into uh, doing his job uh, as an admiral, right? Or at least it didn't conclude specifically on that, but that was just the vibe it gave, right? I mean, it was just like a state of state of affairs sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Also, four other people were added to the board since you have said that's the only one. Oh no, who who else is left? I need to know, Theta. Oh, oh I guess like the rest of the council, right? Yeah, Everybody all the people on there. top. All of our uh, evil villains from your perspective. Nope. Royal Sanford, Cornelia, Joan, and Huang. Secretary of Human Resources, Finance, Transportation, and just Chairman. So we got a chairman and a president. I guess uh, technically there must be like an entire like house or senate over here or something. Something that we're not seeing, but like would probably have 20 different characters in Wait, it. What president are you talking about? Uh, Royal Sanford is the high council chairman. Yeah. But we also have Job Trunicht, who is the Alliance Central Government National Defense Committee chairman. Right. You said oh, president. I thought he was just straight up president. He's just on defense. Uh, I, guess. I live for the moments where you read everything out and realize in the lifetime that you're not right. And you did it wrong because this guy's in charge. <laughs> he has the highest position. Nope. He's the council chairman of all the people who are on the council. If that was true, Griff, he wouldn't do a vote. And of which he's on said vote, which means that his vote 
is equal to everyone else's votes. You know what that's called? But if everyone you know, else Griff, has a specific Griff, job. I'm going to mute you. You know what this is called? Primus and Depares. He's first among equals. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just comparing, of course, to other things like where we have a lot of like uh, Senate and representational systems and like what's his job if everyone else also has a specific job? His job is just to also be there at meetings. To organize meetings, to uh, keep the uh, the times, to recognize people. His... So he's the guy to blame for not keeping the minutes then. We found your villain. We did it. No, remember my point was that somebody was keeping the minutes? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the clock over here. So we got it. We're going to make it like um, about like this. What time would that be? That's like four o'clock, I guess, maybe five. Uh, so if we are ever wondering where the minutes are, we now know where they are. And they are uh, not connected to here. I think that makes sense, right? <laughs> I don't know what's happening to you right now. Are you having a stroke? <laughs> Sorry, we're trying to find where the minutes are. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I feel like when I hit you with my strongest retorts, like you're like, this guy's the president. He should be up here. And I hit you with like literally the Latin for first among equals. <laughs> you just have no way to deal with it and just go fucking crazy. <laughs> so before I go crazier, Theta, let's go to your crazy thoughts in the segment called Theta Thoughts. What are your thoughts? The Council's debate uh, was the focal point of last episode. We hear that the impetus for not going to war is an economic one instead of a moral one, that the Alliance cannot fiscally support the war any longer, that paying for pensions on a per-battle basis of losses is already breaking them. All the more interesting is the fact that resources for the civilian sector are drying up completely. As Huang puts it, the workforce is becoming less and less skilled, and workplace accidents have tripled since last term. He demands for workers to be returned to the civilian sector from the military. That stands in stark contrast to Sithole's conversation with Yang that they needed tacticians more than they needed educators. And yet, what do we see later in the episode? A collapse mm -hmm. of basic infrastructure but the willingness to extend more expenses to aid any military personnel caught in it. It's all the more telling that it's Cornelia, the Secretary of Transportation, that bends the knee towards the military's need in the council meeting, and it's all the automated car system that is our first hint of failure. The Alliance is displaying a willingness to endure further hardships in order to propagate more war, with the exception of Jessica, of course. Right, yeah, Jessica becomes the dissenting voice once we realize that the entire council is basically on board with this, right? Nope. Three. Well, uh, my point was more so that we are shown the transportation system's failure, and Cornelia mm -hmm. here is one of the people that voted for uh, pro-war. Yeah, I think in terms of environmental storytelling, I think that's actually a very good detail to kind of pick up on. Like, it's not immediately obvious that it's specifically her fault for her views. It is more just, oh, they said things are getting bad, here things are getting bad, and no one's to blame mysteriously, right? <laughs> Still, good observation. I can't tell. But the way the camera zoomed in on the glass during the Adrian and Dominique scene, there may have been a ring at the bottom of the glass, like he was going to propose or something. Something I observed and wanted to bring up for posterity in case something or in case it comes to something. Mm -hmm. There we go. If we see uh, if we see a second attempt at that in the future, there we go. You predicted it ahead of time. I'm. Well, he had a conversation with. Fuck, what's his name? Let me scroll all the way down here to the bottom. Uh, Nicholas Boltick over the phone, who indicated questioningly if he was going to be staying uh, at the place. And he looks over at Dominique, and Paul hesitates for a moment, and then indicates that he won't be staying. Mm. So the the there's minor hints, possibly, that he intended to have a better evening 
than when she decided to go to work and she says, I didn't sell my freedom. Right, right. I I think that's a, a good point. War is the war here is not just affecting the infrastructure, it's also affecting the personal relationships. They're though. not at war, Griff. I don't know what you're talking about. Or Yes, said. Anyway, continue. No, I mean they're not at war. They they had the whole conversation of, yeah, we've bought up a bunch of stock in their uh agricultural fields. We own eighty three percent of this oh. place and Oh, right, the other con. Okay, yeah, now I understand. Okay. Well, they only have one conversation in the episode. That's all they did. Sorry, I I forgot that there was an entire third faction that's who you were talking about for a moment. I thought we were talking about a couple of Federation characters. Well, Griff, I can see your mouse is still here on the window, so you're still looking at the page with three factions on it. Right, and uh, this third faction has not quite been doing enough yet. Uh, I mean, they've bought out wholesale entire, you know, industries in both factions. We'll, we'll be coming back to them once they fill out a bit more. I mean, maybe they don't need to. Maybe it's all automated stockbrokers and shit. Maybe. All we know, is they, all we know is they have one planet. Because we've seen the one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Coruscant looking place. Running an entire empire via one planet. All right, all right let's go, city state. Well, I mean, with all it is is money, right? How much of that's just like liquid assets, versus mm -hmm. how much of it is, you know, stakes and corporations and what? A lot of invisible shit that has no meaning to starving man on street. We we gotta get more on the third faction here. But that's it. Uh, you got anything else? That's it. All right. <laughs> So, uh, we ended off last time on Jessica getting into politics, and was this going to be an Empire or a Federation episode today? Uh, what's the number? Uh, the number is number 10, and, and it is the interlude. Let's see, we started with uh, Reinhold, Reinhardt. Uh, let's see, what is it? It's left to right, right to left. So, and I think it's Reinhardt faces left, Yang faces right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what episode did you say we were? Ten. So, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This should be Empire. All right. I think I'm going to actually disagree on that. I think... We're actually going to get a split episode, a fully split episode. People are just chilling, and it's going to go ahead and set us up for whatever the next conflict is. Well, pointedly, usually the episode ends with whoever side we're on, mm -hmm. right? So the uh, when it's an Empire episode, we start with Reinhardt looking off to the far right, and the scrolls to the far left when we see Yang and company. Yeah, and yeah. then you know we had then we have a uh, Alliance episode, and then. Boom, and then we scroll back. I mean, technically, we did have Assault on Icerhorn, which kind of defeats that, because it was a two-parter. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I didn't, actually, wait, I didn't take that into account. Aha! <laughs> Foiled again. Two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten? So maybe Alliance episode. The problem is here, it's a 50-50, right? Because the Dominion's not on there. So I only get a shot. I'm going to say... If we get a full Dominion episode, I'm going to be surprised. Though. I'm going to say Alliance now because of that uh, two-parter okay. that I forgot, which may have fucked the whole scrolly thing up. All right. So I think no matter which side we do end up on, we're going to go ahead. We're going to ease back even more. We're going to relax, and we're just going to have a good time today. So... I think with that, let's just go ahead and watch and see what happens. But before we do, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below if you that algorithm. On top of all that, if you watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some really access stuff, you can go ahead and follow us over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but no pressure. It's all supports the channel, just a little bit extra. Click the link down below, join the Discord. Let us know who has the best characters, which faction. I guess we are getting the Dominion episode. Oh, 
星同盟が帝国に対する全面的な軍事攻勢を企んでいると帝国の誇るイゼルロン要塞を陥落させ好戦的な軍事攻勢を企んでいるとハンとともがイゼルロンという共闘法を有するに至ったのは事実だ。それがすぐ全面的な進行に結びつくとは限らんでしょう。I guess that explains why he's calling the,、uh, the alliance insurgents. 第1規模とは兵力にして3000万。I guess that would be. What was that, like a tenth or a third of the amount they lost at the Astartes? I think a third. イゼルロン攻略のことかあれは到底成功するとは思えなかったし、やるならどのようなものか。メインキャラクターです。Yeah, I love the outside perspective on it. It's like, why bother? It's not gonna work. 同盟に傾いた軍事バランスを少し帝国側に戻してやらねばならぬ。楽しそうね。そう見えるか。Uh, we must always have permanent war. Now, I'm just so rich that I use、uh, the real world as my FPS. <laughs> Not FPS, RTS. Ah, <laughs> ラインハルトと見て間違いない。今度は勝ちすぎない程度に勝ってくれねば困る。We need to cripple him as much as possible. Literally the opposite of what he just said, Griff. He said I need him to win. He said I need him to win, but not too much. Right. Which means don't cripple him as much as possible. It's okay, he'll pull out a win from nothing. He was won like one to three before, right? It's, it's literally, I need him to do just a little bit more than a draw. Which is literally doesn't read to me as I need to cripple him as much as possible. <laughs> for one thing, little does he know thing, that he... the scenario is already perfectly set up between him and Yang for them to already be in a draw. <laughs> for one thing, if I was saying I need to cripple him as much as possible, I wouldn't be saying I need him to win. <laughs> Look, Reinhardt will pull out a win if you gave him like a shoebox or something. You, you, gotta, you gotta pull back a whole lot. I mean, not if they sent the 13th fleet. Oh, that's right. He is commanding like half of the Empire's forces, right? Minimum. I don't even know if that's true anymore. There's. But we'll probably get a refresher on it. There's literally somebody above him in the structure. So it's like. Or maybe not above him. Like, he's equivalent to five other guys. Yeah, How are、yeah. those five guys equivalent to you if you control half of everything? Right? It's all chain of command. I'm gonna miss it when we leave the song behind. I know. We're, we're not gonna get any Yang tea time in space again. No, the song. I don't give a shit about the animation. <laughs> yeah, maybe the dancing starships at the beginning. Mm hmm. Fezan, the Lemusai, the Hakka, and the Gata. Hanangunga, while the Kokuno, you know, the capital had a different name. Sunukazu, you're so sons and mung. But now all these names are popping up on screen. I can't look away to double check. <laughs> It's okay. We've been with these two before. No, we haven't. We've been with him. We've been with him, not the other guy. I mean, also pointedly, we're watching in subtitles. I shouldn't be looking away anyway. They're gonna figure out we lost Sizor. They haven't told anyone about it, my word. Yes, they have. They did last episode, or two episodes ago. But that's what he just said. Do you not remember when Reinhardt got offered the other three person, people's position、mm -hmm. because they failed and lost Hydrohorn? Yeah, and he's saying the commoners are figuring it out. Fuck those people. 
This is a democracy. Was it this guy that he told? I mean, the Kaiser told? Not this guy, the other guy, obviously. Him. <laughs> that moment when you say this guy, the wrong person's on screen. <laughs> Yeah, that's how that works. Yeah, it's a dual episode. It's not a dual episode, it's a try episode. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> but no, this is all laying all the groundwork here. The Empire is not looking so hot. Los Lobos! Uh, あ、めちゃくちゃ <laughs> Look, I love doing the board shit, but it's a pain in the ass <laughs> sometimes. Especially episodes like these. There you go. Niang is still doing the 13. I can't wait for the back half where these people all fucking die. Oh god, I hope there's not a guy on the other side who controls 50% of the Empire. <laughs> Just in case you thought there might be action this episode. <laughs> Interlude. Okay, the red one's probably ketchup, but what's the purple one? <laughs> the purple one? You remember the Grimace milkshake, right? Nope. <laughs> oh, there's our transport minister. No doubt talking about the recent failures in transportation. Here's your tomato soup. Yeah, see, all the problems are because you're too good. The kid's oh, right. See, that's why they won't let me retire. じゃあ、そもそもどうしてこんな無茶な作戦が立案されたんです？え、この頃国内的に不祥事が続いたからね。政府は人々の注意を外に向ける必要があるのさ。not like a good old war to distract everyone from the home. I guess they just haven't taken up the whole bread and circus idea then. I don't think they got the money locked for circuses data. We saw stuff falling apart already. Well, they would if they diverted away from military. But that would be one less bomb. How far away do you think the alliance is from converting their war orphan uh, adoption strategy into the free labor strategy? <laughs> Oh, that'd be particularly cruel. They're making a point that they're losing out on the workforce, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, a little child labor to fill in the gaps. Everyone does it, right? 
Fledged mean instead of having uh, military officers adapt war orphans, they just become property of the state. So no plan then. Th there's no objective here except scare everybody. See, no plan. No plan then. This is guy that I know. He wears a mask. Calls himself, I don't know, Annabelle, Annabelle, something like that. <laughs> he seems to play with pretty well. He didn't give an explanation at all. I pushed, but I don't want to get oh, attacked go, by here. guys in hockey masks when I go home. Oh, the super table. Oh, I love this. Thank God the universe is a straight line, am I right? <laughs> oh, is this a callback? Remember when you beat that guy in the academy? The feat of the supply chain was considered a feat of the fleet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you want our most ambitious plan today to turn into our worst loss again? Uh, the Vietnam defense. Those are a hard call of saying the, the fight where we lost so many people was not a defeat. <laughs> ない補給船に加え、解放軍として占領地への対処も行うとなれば、たちまち物資不足に陥ります。多少補給が滞ったところで、占領地の民衆に物資を供出させることも可能ではないか。それを計算に入れて。Sure, you know, guys, how about we plan as if though they're on their best and not yeah. just plan for them to make mistakes? The, the entire plan hinges on, like, oh, our enemies are all powerful but also stupid and weak. Well, I mean, I instantly hated it when this guy was like, Ah, they couldn't think of that plan. Only you could think of that plan. Fuck you. A guy arguing death before dishonor here, jeez. Well, God, this guy's... Your anti-war sentiment dulls our ability to make decisions. It's like, you're not making any fucking decisions. You're literally saying playing it by ear. そもそもこの遠征は先制政治の暴圧に苦しみ銀が帝国250億の民衆を解放し救済する崇高な大義を実現するためのものです我々が解放軍として大義に基づいて行動すれば帝国の民衆は看護して我々を迎え進んで協力
I feel like we're about to go on an adventure or there's like a guy playing a lute in the background. I guess technically they are. No, they are about to setting up their expedition. Look, when the adventurers are about to head off into a suicide pact, you don't play the happy, joyous music. <laughs> But you're not. You're literally slaves to the democracy. Which is a weird statement, but true. Well, now with a wistful music. It's weird. It's a weird choice. He, he's just back into thought about, like, well, you know, maybe things could be better. We should be like remembering a better time, but there hasn't I mean, been started... one because they've been fighting for hundreds of years. We literally started uh, our discussion with the ways the Federation could crumble into basically like fascist militarism, and like here it is. I think that's what we're watching. Ah, there we go. Quiet, the table's listening. Oh my gosh, both conspiracies on the both sides are having the same argument. If they win now, they'll be beyond our control. <laughs> well, no, he's saying we have to lose so they don't get cocky enough to try and push us further. Mm -hmm. You know, Neither the logical, think... the logical extreme to this is Sithole having a conversation of, you know, we know better. What if we just took control? Well, I guess that's the killer in that sense, then. What a Falker that guy is. I mean, he's right. I won't trust Falker at all. In any case, you want to know what his butt looked like in pants. Here you go. Seen specifically for the ladies. なるほど。君は時々鈍感になるな。ライバルとは他でもない君のことだ。しかし本部長閣下、私は君が自分自身をどう評価しているかは関係ない。フォークが君をどう思っているかが問題なのだ。He's already singled you out, man. There's no going back. The dude has no plan. I mean, <laughs> that's all I needed to know about him. この事態まで予測したわけではないが、軍土における君の存在は。we can't lose without you, Yang. それは、フォーク巡視に対抗しろということですか。彼だけではない。君が軍の最高の地位を占めれば、おのずと彼のような。Well, I mean, I understand the argument. It's we need people in the military to argue not to fight, because everybody we have in the military just wants to fight. 本部長閣下はいつも私に重すぎる課題をお与えになります。君に叱ってきない。私はこれでも君子のつもりですから、危うきには近寄りたくないのです。自分のできる範囲で何か仕事をやったら、あとはのんびり気楽に暮らしたい。そう思うのは怠け根性なんでしょうか。そうだ、
I mean, they're already on the back foot, right? They already lost either horn. Mm -hmm. Or Ice or Lone. Never say it right. Well, there you go. Hopefully, future me does the math on how many people per ship that probably is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is worthless. We're the only ones that matter. Let's go. You know, be real killer. Let them get as deep as he can, and then attack Isherhorn. Take it back. <laughs> Cut them off. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. But then that would put their back against the wall. They, the only thing they could do then would be to fight. Yeah, but I'm trying to win. I'm not trying to do this 50-50 crap. つまり、ハントどもに退却を強いるだけでは済まさぬと。無論だ。万有にはそうの流血を持って報いるあるのみ。しかし、どのように敵をより深く誘い込む。ハントどもに帝国領の蹂躙を許す。That's half of my idea already. He's not wrong. Alright. He's the one character not on the same page as everyone else. Everyone else has a specific plan. He's just like, no, win as hard as possible. Why not? I know, exactly. He has no motivation to do otherwise. His goal is to get all of his men promoted as high as they possibly can, which means win as hard as we possibly can. It's him against the galaxy right now. Let's go. I mean, I understand that attacking Isra Lone would be like an impossible task anyway. Oh, yeah. But the thing, if you pulled it off, you'd cut off 60% of the Alliance's forces in your territory, which means anything you have left. Just cut them off, hit and run tactics, whatever. They're just going to fall apart with zero supplies. All right, so hear me out. Here's the plan. So you know how uh, the Alliance has Iserlorn right now. What if we took a bunch of uh, Iserlorn traders and dressed them up as the Alliance and sent them in uh, being chased by our fleets and engineered a scenario for them to get into the headquarters of that station and release a explosive gas into it such that they immediately surrender? I think that might have a chance. No, nah, I think they would have a different... See, if I was doing it... <laughs> If I was doing it, I think I would have a, a ramming strategy. Oh, just throw everything you can at it? Well, we know its outer defense is like a liquid metal sort of thing, which mm -hmm. means it's probably not as hard as you think it is. And uh, we've got hundreds of thousands of ships. What if we could make a corridor of those ships by ramming one ship after another into the exact same spot, and then you know, boarding party our way through the corridor of ships to the inside. Because we're not going to win a fight mm -hmm. in a ship battle against Iserhorn. It's like the fucking Death Star. I, I think I would have to go with a long-term plan myself here. 
I think uh, Shisen, the, one season, where they all die. the season is only 12 episodes long, right? And then we start getting yeah, into we got the, two more. Then we start getting into the longer season things. But I, I hear what you're saying, but I think Isolhorn is a whole fucking planet, self sufficient. So I don't, yeah. think, don't think you can just like isolate and starve it out. Also, you can't right, really you can't isolate get to the other side of it anyway. But I think my plan would be set up a long term plan of having asteroids move in from different angles and organize them to strike at roughly the same time period. And during that time period, then do your assault. You then have to split your idea between stopping those specific projectiles, which are essentially free, or target the enemy incoming fleet. Either way, you take lots of damage. Actually, I don't think either of our plans would work. Probably it's, not. It, We're not military tactics. Well, no, no. Really. I mean, it's a fucking Death Star. The super yeah. laser can fire like once every minute. So I yeah. don't think you're... And the, the laser can move around the fucking planet, too. So I don't mm -hmm. think the the asteroid thing is going to work because they're too fucking slow. And the, also the fact that thing decimated like thousands of ships per blast. So yeah. I kind of think you'd have to like tow an entire asteroid belt at high velocity and like all the same. Then it could. The, then the it's physics a super of weapon. it are improbable to say the least. Never mind the practicality of doing it in the first place. It's a super weapon is the problem. It's. I think how do you fight a super weapon? The answer is it's really dang hard. <laughs> I think the only way to do this is to run. You said we can't get to the other side, right? I said mm -hmm. get to the other side. Split your forces up so that like do a giant O, oh, like a giant donut. Yeah. You know, certain width uh, size of the planet magnitude like times 10 and then just line all of your ships up like that around it and just full speed towards the planet and then just go right past it. The super weapon is going to destroy so many of your ships, but it's never going to hit the majority of them at once because there's no yeah. possible way to get an angle on the donut shape. It's So just <laughs> run all of your fucking ships past Isarhorn until you can jump the other side and then right. form a defensive blockade on the other side of Isolhorn so that they can't Run the blockade, it. try to hit supplies, maybe go for another target that forces people's attention off of it, and at least weaken it so that you get a shot. Or, you know, bring, have all your ships loaded with equipment enough to make a long-term beachhead on the other side so you don't have to, uh, to get supplies back from the other side of the Empire. Or bring enough mm. equipment to start building shipyards on the other end and all the incredibly risky plans obviously but like again what are you gonna do about it super weapon shit i would do if i was playing an rts right there's no yeah. way we're doing a uh we're doing a I stalemate guess... for like half the game now i'm gonna bring um shipyard equipment and i'm gonna f find a isolated planet that i can build a shipyard on your side of the map and then I'm going to determine which planets on your side have the resources I need to start constructing more ships. I and guess uh, there, there's some words like for like all this kind of thinking that I think like best apply. It's like we try things and see if they work. Sometimes they just don't, and that's fine too. No, it's the whole point of the first episode. You, you Let's just do, gotta throw what it's you the can whole the point of the first episode, Griff, of doing yeah. shit that no one else has done before because they say it won't work. And then it turns mm -hmm. out it works. And the point is more so that our debate here about what to do is yeah. literally making us the villains of the show. Oh, yeah, no, like, th this is straight up super villainy right here we're up to, but it's fun. Well, not super villainy, it's just the villainy, literally, that the bad guys of the show are doing. Mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm, putting mm -hmm. ourselves in the position of the bad guys rather than trying to figure out how to make things work as the good guys. Well, well, I mean, the no, good guys to, at least have their plan of we are to going fair, to lose. To be fair, I'm putting myself in the position of the character I represent in the show, which is Reinhardt. So, mm -hmm. winning. You're just agreeing with me in this hypothetical and not going I, along. I, I'm having fun conspiring with you, because that's half the fun. <laughs> yeah, you're, hypo you're, you're joining in the hypothesis instead of trying to figure out what gang your guy should do. Uh, what he should do is take his fleet, turn around, and take over. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that, that's what I keep thinking when, like, these two, like, keep getting more and more of the fleet under their control. I'm just like, 
at some point, nobody can stop them. And that's what basically every character is realizing. I don't think that's true for the Reinhardt side, because, again, I think I've equated mm -hmm. this many times to, like, Soviet Russia. Yeah. Where, you know, you have the political... Pol uh, Politic Bureau? I can't remember the name. Politic Bureau. Where, Bureau, yeah. Yeah, where they literally have people inside every place just to make sure that people are following the letter of the the, the mm. policies of the state. That's why they may see the the eyeballs and the statues and everything. I do believe that there are people aboard Reinhardt's ships that are willing to, like, suicide for... I think the <laughs> example is the cook in um, The Hunt for Red October, right? Just right. random dude, but he's literally going to get killed if he he's victorious on mm -hmm. killing the captain and everything, but he'd rather die than see the state fall. Right. So I think uh, that probably ends off our discussion then for right now. So let's go ahead and wrap up for the day. This has been Stoneface Reactions, everybody. I'm Griffin. That's Theta. We'll catch you next time. See you around. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?